Аз съм тук да представя Ивана и Величка Атанасови. Не знам дали фамилиите просто съвпадат. А, да, те ще ни разкажат за Composition of S-Bomb. И повече думи за тяхното представяне ще кажат те самите. Uh, hello everybody and thank you for joining us today. I uh, hope you're already having a lot of fun at uh, OpenFest. Hope you're meeting with a lot of open-minded people and learning cool open stuff. My name is Velička Tanasova. I'm an open source engineering manager uh, in the VMware's program, open source program office. And this is Ivana Tanasova. And she's one of the very talented open source engineers I have the pleasure to work with. Just for the record, and if you are curious, we are not related in any way. We are not sisters, we are not cousins. The two of us just happen to have married guys with the very common surname, uh, Bulgarian surname, Atanasov. So yeah, that's why we are two Atanasov on the stage today. Uh, we are very excited to have you here and to be talking about uh, SBOMS, Software Bill of Materials, uh, to share about uh, the security and compliance benefits as bombs bring and to be composing the ultimate as bomb together. Uh, we're, going, we're going to walk you through some challenges and how we can approach them. We are going to demo a cool tool, open source tool that we are currently working on and that is actually um, helping us overcome one of these challenges. And uh, at the end, we'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Uh, yeah, one more thing. We decided to do this talk in English uh, because we believe that uh, the topic of S-bombs is not only interesting but very important and we hope that it will get to more people. Okay. Let's begin. I'm going to show you something first. That's not an OpenStar cluster and it's not uh, the subway system of New York City, for example. You might have already guessed uh, that this is a dependency graph. Uh, this is a dependency graph of a real life project. Can somebody name the project? I'll give you. Without Orlean, please. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Uh, this is an open source system for automating uh, deployment, scaling, and uh, management of containerized applications. Very popular one. Somebody? Kubernetes? Who said Kubernetes? Have a winner. Yeah, this you is the dependency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the dependency graph of Kubernetes. It's a really beautiful and it greatly demonstrates how we build software today. We focus on our unique innovations and deal with common challenges uh, leveraging existing solutions. And there is a perfect uh, software development approach. Uh, we don't need to reinvent the wheel over and over again. And if we use our time wisely and we focus on our unique innovation, our solutions are brought to life much faster, uh, anticipating and meeting our users' expectations. And that is awesome. But every third-party dependency that we use drags along uh, its dependencies, and they drag along their dependencies, and we can easily end up with tons of known and unknown dependencies. And that lack of transparency and visibility might get us into a trouble one day. How many of you have seen this image? Just one? Two? Yeah. Uh, this image, to be honest, I'm sick of it. Uh, you can see it in almost every blog post, uh, talk, or anything on supply chain security. Uh, but uh, yeah, and it actually, we started seeing it at the end of last year, I believe, uh, in December when Apache officially disclosed the critical log4j vulnerability. Uh, the log4j, you know, this is um, a logging library that is used by millions of uh, Java applications. And uh, what were the chances that my Java, your Java, anybody's Java had a direct or a transitive uh, log4j dependency? Well, they were high enough for the, both the private and the public sector to stop the Christmas countdown uh, last December and start checking their systems and uh, uh, 
and analyzing what's the impact on them, and they will do that with uh, priority. But to go back uh, on the uh, image, somewhere there, there is that small project that can be poorly or not even maintained at all, that is bending under the weight and complexity of the modern digital infrastructure. And those dependencies, they've been there forever, but we've started noticing them now in the light of recent cyber attacks, when we finally realized that we need, must pay closer attention to the security of the software that we use. And to do so, we must first know what software that's actually in use, and to move, shift from a passive stance if we get hacked into a proactive mindset when we get hacked. This requires an increased knowledge of all software assets. And in order to have more, more secure projects, we need a hardened supply chain, software supply chain, one that explicitly declares all software components to help us identify and mitigate risk before they become a crisis. And here comes the S-bomb. A software bill of materials can help us address these needs. S-bombs uniquely identify a piece of software and its dependencies in a machine-readable format. And here, organization benefit from reduced cost, license compliance, and security risks. And for example, an S-bomb, this is again a dependency graph generated with the same tool, it can help determine if security vulnerabilities were previously identified in our software dependencies. Uh, I took some real examples here. And they can they generate information that prove code provenance and can help de uh, detecting malicious uh, attacks uh, during development and deployment as well. Or it can help identify if some there in our dependency graph there is some tiny dependency with an incompatible license that can get us into a real legal travel. With uh, the increasing um, recognition of the importance of uh, being able to identify the software components, the Linux Foundation decided to conduct a study at the beginning of this year uh, to check uh, what's uh, the readiness, the SBOM readiness and adoption in different organizations. They've published the results of their study in a report in February. And according to this report, 90% of organizations across the sample have started their SBOM journey. But it's going to be quite a journey and would require uh, quite some effort because industries need to build confidence with SBOM standards, with tooling, and best practices. Uh, SBOM is not a brand new concept. It's been there for a while, but still what often happens when you ask for an SBOM is that you receive that random format custom invented document that creates less data than you would hope for. And this brings some major problems like data is not comprehensive, it cannot benefit from the existing automations, uh, it prevents interoperability, and it's harder for a data exchange. And what I'm trying to say with this is that we need to stick to a standard. And we already have some standards. The SPDX uh, started uh, as a pillar of the Linux Foundation Open Compliance Program, and it's an official also proof standard now. It's uh, been a de facto standard for uh, about eight years, and pretty much looks like this. It covers information like uh, packages and files included, the relationships between them, um, the uh, information about how the document was created and so on. And 2.2 .2 is, uh, it's not the latest version, but it's the latest after ISO approved version now. And 3.2.3 .2 was published uh, this end of this summer. Uh, and it uh, has improved capability of, uh, uh, of addressing security related information. 
and now the free dot o version is baking up and it's a bit different from the previous, it's reorganized into profiles and uh, there is the core profile which creates general information about the SBOM. It has a software profile which creates package files and snippets information. It has licensing profile, defects which is specific for security information, build profile that's specific for uh, capturing any build information and so on. And those turn into a very powerful instrument of knowing what's hidden into your software. Uh, because they allow you to customize uh, the elements uh, and give you more freedom and give you a better chance to describe what you actually need. And uh, there, uh, once the free dot o version is available, uh, you can easily translate to dot two and to dot three documents to the free dot o, but the vice versa would expectedly bring some data loss and the profiles themselves are, can be a valid SPDX SBOM files by themselves uh, and they make up the SPDX but you can de facto use uh, any combination of them. But for example, you can have an SBOM containing only core software, licensing and defects profile or any other. Um, and this is not the only standard, there are others as well. There is the Cycon DX, which was initiated by OWASP with the intention to be more focused on creating security context. And how it does this, it uh, allows you to add the CP suite and per la labels uh, that can help to uh, analyze the software for known security vulnerabilities. And all SBOM formats are intended to be interoperable and to, to be able to use across uh, organizational boundaries and to be exchangeable between tools that uh, consume SBOMs. This is the hope, still not fully achieved, but uh, this is the intention of them. They are not uh, conflicting or uh, competing. Cool. So. We know what data we want to convey across organizational boundaries in an SBOM. And we have the standardized open formats, meaning, here are the formats, uh, meaning that uh, the SBOMs can be machine generated and read, the exchange can be automated, and we can make it scale. But how do we do that in our modern complexity? with all the ecosystems, programming languages, build systems, package managers. Do we have the tools for that, Ivana? Actually, a lot of communities are focused on developing open source tooling for efficient and effective exchange of SBOMs, and a lot of cool stuff is happening out there. And we are not going to walk through the whole landscape. But what we would like to leave the room with, with this landscape, landscape is uh, to try to define what ultimate stands for. And this landscape plays a major role in the definition of ultimate because usually tools appear from need and requirements. The requirements represent the use cases and those we want those use cases well represented in the data. Um, TURN is the tool that we are most, most actively engaged with. Uh, it is an open source inspection tool for generating SBOMs for container images and Docker files. It began its life uh, in VMware, uh, but is now uh, under the ACT uh, organization where other cool projects like Fosology, OSS Review Toolkit, SPDX tools and others. Uh, leaf and it's post build solution. It supports uh, the existing standards and it's a good fit uh, for use cases where you don't have an SBOM shift with the package because you can generate it post factum and can find the data that you need or even if you have the SBOM you can use it in order to get more data and compare and see if something is missing in the pre-generated SBOM. And there are other tools as well. Um, 
just mentioning some of them. Salus is a good solution for generating S-bombs at build time. It was created at Microsoft for their specific use cases. And it can be integrated in CI CD systems. It's in, it can be integrated in GitHub or GitHub. And it's specific for Microsoft's use cases, but uh, it's open source and it might be a good fit for someone when, when, it's, uh, uh, when it represents a specific needs. Uh, another tool is the BOM tool, which is part of PKGConf. It's specific for Alpine. Uh, and it uh, generates S-bombs at build time for C and C++ packages. And this is an example of really good tool for this kind of packages because if you use it for them, you would get more complete data, including compile information, for example, or other uh, information that other tools might omit. Uh, but it's specific, so it gives that information for that specific use case. And uh, the SPDX S-bomb generator is another tool that uh, builds uh, S-bombs, generates S-bombs from source files and source code. Um, so it can, it's not, can be used for inspection, but uh, it's a good uh, solution that uh, can give pre-built information. And the Kate's bomb is an emerging solution that it was uh, uh, created by the Kubernetes community for generating S-bombs and it can help uh, generate S-bombs from directories, container images, single files, and so on. And it is also a consumption tool. It can be used for uh, operating with already created documents. And oh, there are other tools as well. As we already saw, it's, it's a big landscape. And yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome that there is such a diversity of uh, tools that generate as bombs at the different stages of uh, the software life cycle. Each stage, however, has uh, its unique features. And S-bombs might be different uh, depending on when and what data was collected. Missing build or dependency uh, information might limit the security and uh, uh, compliance benefits of S-bombs. So we need to make sure that we have all the missing pieces because only one uh, vulnerable piece can put the entire system at risk. And this is the risk that we are trying to mitigate how can we do that? I'm going to briefly introduce SAUSA, the, soft, the supply chain levels of software artifacts, uh, just in case that someone in the audience here is not familiar with. Uh, it's a checklist of standards and controls to prevent tampering and secure packages and infrastructure in your projects. And it's a fragmented into levels of security covering the software lifecycle. And those levels are used as a common language to talk on when we try to describe how secure is our software. And those are the levels. They, are, they sum up the best practices known uh, for the different stages of the software life cycles. And they start with basic steps and uh, at the lower, lower levels, uh, and expand to protect against more advanced threats in the upper levels. And given that introduction, uh, here it's, uh, it's a diagram from SAUSA, and we can see, uh, it's, uh, I had an animation that I deleted, so this is where the confusion comes from. <laughs> we can see that the, the red triangles they mark the threats that SAUSA addresses during the, during the software life cycle. And it's highly common to collect data about software components uh, at the source uh, stage or at the package stage, uh, which is uh, actually post-build. But if we generate S-bombs at build time, this, this way we would have high fidelity information about what went into the artifact, including better dependency information and reflecting any changes that were done by the compiler or other tools. And we don't have to make uh, guesses post factum because uh, the, all the 
post-build tools, uh, they use heuristics to find that data. But other use cases are also possible. For example, you might not have anything else than the object code. And in this case, you would need an, a binary inspection tool to find what's hidden there. Or there might not be a good build time solution uh, for a specific use case. So in this case, we would need uh, binary analysis tools uh, and we would find that information post factum. And we saw from the landscape that each tool has a slightly different approach. One is build time, other is a post build, other generates S-bombs from source code, some are for specific languages and so on. And this, this diversity is highly necessary to capture an S-bomb that's exclusive. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We, we need the best of uh, all worlds, of uh, all tools, because we cannot just expect uh, to have uh, from source or build time generated S-bombs for everything. And on the other hand, we cannot just settle upon uh, uh, post-build scan S-bombs ex exclusively. On the other hand, software is modular in nature, and every component has its uh, purpose, uh, life cycle, and dependencies. If we incrementally left shift our S-bomb generation on per component basis, we'll end up with uh, wider uh, in quantity, but smaller in scope S-bombs, to which we refer as micro S-bombs. Having micro S-bombs that describe every single component that builds up a larger software uh, piece uh, will uh, result in much more accurate uh, dependency and build information being captured. But of course, here comes the risk of us uh, piled up with uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of S-bombs. And can we, can we escape that nightmare? Can we do something about it? Yeah, actually, if we want an exclusive data, we would need those, uh, <laughs> that amount of documents in many use cases. Uh, this is not something we can escape from, but what we can do is to stitch them together into a single S-bomb, and we refer to this as composing. And this is why we, we developed a composing functionality that uh, we are going to shortly demonstrate. And what it does, it uh, parses all the uh, micro S-bombs. It merges them together uh, into a single S-bomb. It removes uh, duplicates. And it updates the relationships between the components so that you have a real dependency graph at the end. And uh, it constructs a fully functional S-bomb at the end. And, uh, it takes uh, the latest version of all micro S-bombs and generates an S-bomb that is the highest versions of all. And uh, we are going to shortly demonstrate an example. Uh, it is, I don't know if I started it. No. Uh, the, we are in a container in a f f run from a photon image, and we have PKG Conf installed in it. We, as we can see, there are not much packages in there. And we install a Cinnamon Desktop Dev package there, which comes with 205 dependencies with it. And at the end, when it's done, we will see that uh, all of them are now linked into PKG Conf. So they are available here. And what we are going to do, we will create a simple SPDX directory to store the generate test bombs. We see that it's empty. And we are going to go through all the packages. And we will use uh, bomb2, that is part of PKGConf, to generate an SPDX S-bomb for all of those packages. And now we will see that, uh, sorry? Ah, oh, uh, I don't think it's possible to zoom. Um, um, I can share the demo if anyone is interested so that you can see more details. Or, um, and here we can see that uh, 
all those uh, SPDX, SBOMs are generated. Uh, and uh, let's open one of them. Uh, for example, the Care FC. We will see that we have the Care FC package. It uh, has Care, which has G object, which has G lib, and we have some package information about them. And if we search for relationships here, we will see the dependency information that uh, Caro FC is a dependency of Caro, and uh, we have the G object dependency, G lib, and etc. And we can see the dependency of them and etc. Uh, and what we are going to do now, we will uh, copy all those uh, SPDX files externally, just because in uh, in the regular use cases in a CI/CD system, you usually do that outside. But we might also create this as part of the image and ship it. It depends on the use case. And we see that uh, all the data is here. And uh, we're going to now uh, use our Compose functionality and stitch them together and check if we have all the data. Uh, we will open, this is a simple config. It's a dummy example here, but uh, it allows you to configure some of the core data that you need. Uh, I just use some example information here. Uh, and now we are going to use our compose functionality and we are going to compose all the SBOMs in our SPDX directory and we are going to create a cinnamon composed.spdx from them. And we are going to shortly observe what's in there. Uh, we see all the micro SBOMs here and now we see Sorry that it's small. I really thought that it's zoomed, but it's not. <laughs> um, and uh, we see the general information here, uh, which uh, the information even I don't see now. Uh, we can see the relationships. And as we see, this top level document, it describes all the data. It has this relationship with all the components. They are not its dependencies, but it describes all the packages that are stitched together. And we, if we search for Cairo, we can see that this relationship is available here. And we have Cairo with the Cairo FC dependency with the GLIP and etc. And we can see the whole dependency graph. And we have all the data about this, the, those um, packages and we have it in a single place that we can operate with and this allows us to have uh, full data because we might generate micro SBOMs with various tools for various use cases in different stages and um, this ha really helps us operate with them at the end. And the takeaways, uh, we already shared a lot of takeaways but maybe if we have to summarize uh, Yes, generating micro S-bombs and composing an ultimate S-bomb uh, comes with some technical challenges and uh, a lot of communities are working very successfully to overcome those challenges. Some are still in the process of overcoming. And it's not rocket science after all, but uh, for many legacy systems, uh, <laughs> applying this and generating S-bombs from them might really turn into rocket science. And there is one more challenge. Yeah, uh, there is one more challenge lurking behind. Organizations and communities need to introduce the necessary changes to their processes uh, to start adopting uh, SBOMs and to start being involved in SBOM production. Uh, providing SBOM comes with a lot of benefits one might expect to realize, uh, but there are also concerns that need to be properly addressed. All actors in the supply chains um, need to provide the necessary transparency in the way their software is created, distributed, and consumed. When we come together, we can take full advantage of uh, SBOM capabilities, and we can have more secure supply chains. And with this, we would like to thank you. And we uh, summarized some of the references that you might uh, need if you're interested in the topic. 
uh, I will leave for a while. And uh, if, uh, wait a second, <laughs> yeah. um, could not include everything, uh, but uh, maybe the key projects, tools, and links, and some of them lead to a lot of information. And if someone has any questions or discussion, you can, we are always willing to talk about the topic more. And uh, with this, we want to thank you. And if there are any questions, we would be happy to reply. Yes, sir. Yeah, just a short announcement. You can ask your questions now. <laughs> You've seen the microphone. Okay. Hi, thanks. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, quick one, uh, can you give us a, a starting guide how we can implement that? For example, I'm working for open source project, as you know. Uh, so we want to implement SBOM in our CIA part. When we do the release, we want to ship the SBOM with the, with the artifacts. Can you give us a, like a starting point of how we can start this one, like reading? Thing. <laughs> uh, I would maybe, uh, it depends on how you build. For example, if you use, uh, I don't know how you build Harbor actually, but if you use, for example, GitHub, uh, you can directly use Salus and integrate it with your CI CD, or you can even use Turn to, uh, to generate SBOM post factum. Uh, or you can use the SPDX SBOM generator. If you see any of the tools, uh, you can play with them and see which works best for your use case. You might also generate from source, or you can use all the solutions and ship something that uh, combines all the data at the end. Uh, and I, I think even those three tools, are, uh, might, or even one of them might be a good solution from you. And it depends on how Strict the requirement is <laughs> about the data. If it's not, yeah, I'm not going to say that. It's not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a reality that's not politically correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah uh, uh, one one quick question also. Uh, once. You, one generated generate uh, S bomb. Uh, do, can you recommend a tool that can consume that information and actually provide you, uh, let's say, the most useful feedback? Like uh, there are tools that uh, used to estimate if a certain version of a package is secure or not, or if it's uh, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Some some something that will consume actually that big chunk of dependencies and stuff, and just say, okay, your security might have been de degraded because of this and this, or something like that. Yeah, there are various tools out there. We did not research that much consumption, but for example, Daggerboard is a consumption tool. I, I can... Um, share afterwards. Uh, there are several consumption tools and we are now working on documentation containing uh, like something like everything you should know about SBOMs and we are going to include uh, consumption there. Uh, what I know about is Daggerboard, but I don't know how much it's uh, focused into security. If you are most interested in security, I can check and uh, we can follow up afterwards. Uh, and uh, Kate's bomb is doing some consumption stuff. I also, I'm not sure how much it's related uh, with security, but I can share with you, uh, I have some list of consumption tools and I can share with you, did not play with them, but uh, can share basic information. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, one question, is it applicable, this SBOM, uh, to monolith uh, applications? Um, yes, uh, yeah, it, it's not, uh, for example, TURN is specified for container images, but uh, there are various solutions. For example, the SPDX SBOM generator, it generates from source, so it doesn't matter uh, whether your application is monolith for it. Um, yeah. Окей, ако нямаме други въпроси, предлагам да направим кратка почивка.